Hey everyone, it's Argonaut here from Return of the Fan, and uh, with the reviews piling up um, about the Eternals, it's not looking so good for this particular movie. Um, and now one of the um, actors has gone on the defensive about the movie. So let's have a look at what he said. So Eternals actor Kumail Nanjiani sets up a tired Hollywood narrative in case Eternals flops at the box office. Yeah, it's probably not going to flop because it's a Marvel movie. It'll still do pretty well, but I think it might um, be struggling to make its money back, or if it does make its money back, it won't make a huge amount of profit for the studio. But then again, they can always stick it on um, Disney Plus and make some money out of it that way. If it brings in new subscribers, if it doesn't bring in new subscribers, then it doesn't bring any extra money in for Disney. So Eternals actor Kumail Nanjiani, who plays a race swap Kingo in the film, set up a tired Hollywood narrative of blaming moviegoers in case the film box at the box office. And of course they all do this. We've seen it before uh, in other movies like um, Ghostbusters 2016, uh, the reboot of Charlie's Angels, and also um, Terminator Dark Fate. Nanjiani took to Twitter where he reacted to an article from the Direct claiming Eternals has been review bombed on IMDb. The article's headline claimed Marvel's Eternals gets review bombed for LGBTQ plus relationship. So if you don't know what review bombing is, it's basically people who leave reviews for a movie which they haven't seen yet because it's not available to the general public. So Eternals hasn't been released to the general public yet. Uh, it's just been specific screenings for reviewers and so on who tend to write um, nice reviews because they want to keep their early access actually going, as I've explained in some of my previous videos about Eternals. <coughs> um, so let's have a look and hear what this tweet actually says. So he wrote in a now deleted tweet, looks like we're upsetting the right people, Eternals opens November 5th. And this was in response to the tweet below it, which is Eternals has been review bombed on IMDb, receiving hundreds of one star reviews from users criticizing the movie's LGBTQ plus representation, despite not having watched the movie. All right, so uh, we know what, what Kumail's um, tweet means, right? They're upsetting what they think is the far right um, extremist people, the toxic fans, as it were. Um, you know what? You're only upsetting the fans of the franchise who would actually go and watch your movie. If anyone doesn't give a shit about your franchise or about your movie, they wouldn't bother writing any uh, review bombed reviews. So basically, you're upsetting the right people. No, you're upsetting your customers, Kumail Nanjiani. Your customers. Think about that. These people are your customers because they're the ones that generally go and see your movie. Um, so let's have a look at um, how the review bomb is going. So the article talks about um, some of the other movies that I mentioned before, and I'm not going to go into those. But if you go right down the bottom, we can see that as of writing, the film currently has a rotten 59% on Rotten Tomatoes from 128 reviews with an average rating of 5.9 out of 10. And if you go back to Rotten Tomatoes, it's now 141 reviews with the same tomato meter and average number of views so you can't say that Rotten Tomatoes is being review bombed Kumail Nanjiani because these are all verified reviewers there's no audience scores yet because um, Rotten Tomatoes does not allow that um, so this is not being review bombed and we can see that the average score of 5.9 out of 10 59 percent is pretty bad for a Marvel movie that's pretty low so it's not getting very good reviews and these are from the people who this movie is made for right the movie is all about diversity um, all about diversity gay representation LGBTQ plus representation um, disability representation we've now got a deaf superhero in this particular movie although it's not um, unheard of we had Daredevil who was blind so um, but they didn't go on about his blindness and all that kind of stuff they just talked about how great a character Daredevil actually is rather than his um, actual um, disability but all the things that the cast says about the characters is all about diversity and so on so no wonder you're turning the fans off um, and Kumail is probably the uh, most, one of the most pandering um, 
uh, actors cast in this movie. Now, good on him for getting the job. I mean, who's going to turn down um, exposure to being in a Marvel's movie and also um, getting paid quite a bit of money? And apparently he was one of the better actors and characters in the, in the movie from what I've seen from some of the reviews, which is quite good. So let's have a look at how the review bombs is actually going. So these are all people, all users. Probably So not all of these will be actual review critics that have seen the movie. So we can see that one star, they talked about hundreds, which is 450. But look at the 10 stars, 934 votes. These are people that haven't seen the movie either. So it's getting review bombed, but it's actually more positive than negative. But you didn't see Kumeo Nanjiani go on about that, did I? Because people are giving you the 10 because of its bloody diversity quotient in this particular movie. Right? So he didn't mention that. He always mentions the worst thing, which is all the one stars. But now nope, don't mention all the 10 stars that people are giving it because they haven't seen the movie either. So why would they be giving it 10 stars when you're complaining about people giving it a one star? So there we go. You can see that um, that's pretty bad. And the box office projection has already um, start to plunge because of the um, reviewers uh, reviews coming out, which are very mixed. Uh, so box office tracking website box office pro originally projected back in the middle of October that Eternals would have a pretty big opening weekend between 82 million and 102 million. So that was woof before we had all the reviews coming in. Um, where is it? There's the new one here. However, those projections have been significantly lowered following a number of critic reviews panning the film. In fact, the film currently has a barely fresh review score as of writing. We talked about that already and talked about Metacritic. So they've adjusted their box office um, estimates. So now they claim the film will have an opening weekend of between 67 and 92 million. On the high end, that will be the highest grossing, grossing opening of the year. However, on the low end, that sees the film tumble to the fifth highest opening of the year. So it'll be interesting to see how it does. This is just estimations, obviously, although Box Office Pro does have a lot of experience in estimating um, box office takings and so on. So it'll be quite interesting to see what it actually is. And looking back at this, I might need to do another video on that. But going back to Kumail Nanjiani, um, they actually have a Bollywood routine <laughs> in the Eternals. So I came across this um, on, uh, on YouTube. So let's have a look. I've turned the sound down because it'll get um, copyright claimed otherwise. So we can see this typical Bollywood dance scene, lots of dancers, colour and everything. There's Kumail with the um, beautiful actress in the middle. Um, I don't know if he actually does proper dancing or not because it doesn't look like he actually moves particularly well. But um, it's, it doesn't do the whole dance as it were. Um, so that just looks absolutely cringe because um, most, I mean, I've, I've seen quite a few Bollywood movies in my time and generally the cringiest moments are the dance scenes. Why would you put that into an Eternals movie? The reason being they are pandering to the Indian audience, right? That's why they go, oh, let's put a Bollywood dance scene and all the people in India will go and watch it. No, because most people in India don't give a shit about the dance routines. All the bloody... Um, Screen, uh, film producers and stuff put that in um, and if they think that he's supposed to be pandering to the Indian audience they're mistaken because if we look at um, the uh, Wikipedia entry for this Kumail is a Pakistani American comedian he's actually never even been in a Hollywood movie before he only went to the US after he finished college in Pakistan and then he did a degree um, and a double major while he was in um, America and then went on to his acting career in comedy and other things as well. So he's in, been quite a few movies, but he's never been in a Bollywood movie. So if you want to pander to the Indian Bollywood audience, stick a friggin' Bollywood actor in there, someone who's actually big in Bollywood, and then you'll get hundreds of thousands and millions and millions of Indian people go to watch it if you have a proper Bollywood actor there. But no, they went for this guy for some particular reason, thinking that he's good enough, but I can tell you now, um, he would not be regarded as a Bollywood actor in India. If you put in a big Bollywood star, you would have locked in the Indian audience pretty much, because people would have gone to see it to see how well the actor does in the particular movie. That's big miss there for you, um, Disney and Marvel. Anyway, that's the end of this movie, and we can see that they're pandering quite a lot in this movie, and obviously the um, 
reviewers just aren't liking it for some reason. I don't know why, because in my previous videos I said if the reviewers normally hate a movie, if it gets a rotten rating, normally um, the normal people will like it because um, it's not made for the critics, it's made for normal people. But for this movie, because it's actually made for the critics, it's woke, it's pandering to um, different types of um, ethnicities, it's pandering to the LGBTQI+, or the alphabet community, and it's pandering to the disabled. Is there anyone it doesn't pander to? Oh, that's right, white people. It doesn't pander to white people. All right, so um, it panders to all of those things which all the white critics actually love, but why is it that they're not giving it a good rating? Right? Hardly anyone me that gives it a bad rating mentions any of the wokeness stuff in it because they know they can't criticize that. So it must be that this movie is actually much, much more worse than the critics are making it out to be. That's the only reason why they're giving it um, such bad ratings because they know that if they say it's really, really good and it turns out to be really, really awful, they're going to start to lose um, people from um, going to their reviews and so on because they're going to lose credibility. You anyway, know, let me know what you think. Do you think the Marvels will actually do really, really well? Or do you think it's going to crash and burn? Be interesting to know in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, you're welcome to give it a thumbs down. And um, hopefully I will catch you in the next video. And if you uh, would like to subscribe, that would be awesome as well. All right, catch you next time.